sit up tall. Align the shoulders over the hips. And then we can practice opening up through the heart. So drawing the shoulders down toward the earth, broadening through the collarbones. And you can explore breathing into the heart. Just noticing, becoming aware, reintegrating the self with that uh, area in through the heart and through the chest and through the lungs. that maybe you don't get to breathe into fully all the time because you're so crunched over and typically not concentrating on the breath. Typically the mind's going a mile a minute and there's a million things we need to do, but for this practice, just for right now, we could turn inward. And then now you can move the awareness all the way down into the belly. So the vagus nerve interacts with, uh, I believe, every bodily system, every organ, and connects with the limbic system at the base of the brain and also with the basal cells, the, um, the cells for breathing. So simulating that vagus nerve can send a message to the brain that it is okay to relax. So this is deep diaphragmatic breathing helps communicate literally integrating mind and body, which in fact will uh, have an effect on your spirit. So we want to focus on breathing deeply and slowly so we can try to lengthen the breath. orient yourself by just noticing your surroundings and then notice the body on the mat or maybe you're noticing the body on the support the connection that the feet have with the mat becoming aware again of the sit bones steadying down into that foundation in through the body Maybe softening the muscles of the legs, the knees, and the feet. So now we can practice a type of breath that can help stimulate that vagus nerve. So what we're going to do is we'll always breathe in through the nose, but then on the exhale, we're going to hollow out the throat, open up the throat as though there were a mirror right in front of your mouth and you were trying to create fog on it. So if it helps to have that tactile sensation, you can bring the hand to the mouth. And then you'll breathe in through the nose, filling up the body, filling up the belly and the lungs. And then on the exhale, you'll hollow out through the mouth and then blow out through the throat. So. And it can make an audible noise, it doesn't have to. But you're breathing in through the nose, filling up the body, and then exhaling out through the mouth, hollowing it out. I feel like you try that a few times. Again, you don't have to make it audible if it's not comfortable. But perhaps you could just come in tune with what that feels like, opening up the throat and breathing out through it. It's what they call ujjayi breath. So if you're ever in a yoga class, then that's what they're talking, or if they say ujjayi, that's what they're talking about. And you might notice that you can hear this, whether it's external audible or more of an internal type of listening. And maybe it might sound like waves or an ocean. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm even laying on a beach. 
and that my breath is matched up with the tide or the, the waves coming in and then washing back out to sea. The breath comes in and it flows out. It's reminding, of it, reminding us of this ebb and flow. It comes and it goes. And we don't have to hang on to it, we can just let it be. So we can begin this practice by bringing hands to heart center. And check again with the posture, lifting up tall through the crown of the mouth, the crown of the head, rolling the shoulders down. And then we can take an intentional breath together. So exhaling, inhaling, exhale out through the mouth or out through the throat, let it go. Then we can go ahead and just release the hands down toward the lap. We're going to lift up tall through the crown of the head and turn the left ear toward the left shoulder, allowing the right shoulder to fall down toward the ear. We're just going to start to breathe into the opening of the right side of the neck. You're welcome to stay here. If you'd like to add a little, you can take the right arm and reach it away from you. We're trying to get the fingertips and the crown of the head in opposite directions. And then you can take the hand behind you, have the back of the hand slide down toward the lower back. And then maybe you'd like to turn the gaze down toward the armpit. Noticing if that changes anything. And then breathing into that too. Almost using the breath to give the right side of the body or the right side of the neck permission to open up. And then we can release out of that. So first we're just going to press the fingertips away. And then we're going to take that left arm, bring it up toward the left temple, the left side of the face, and just use that left hand to just help support the head as we lift it back up. And then we can go ahead and switch move in through the other side. So you can start with the hands on the left, lift up tall through the crown, and then start to tilt the right ear toward the left, right shoulder. Trying to create space in between the ears and the shoulders. Breathing into the opening through the right side, left side. <laughs> and there you can reach away with the left fingertips. And maybe you'd like to add to that by taking the left hand sliding across the back of the body. And then you can turn the awareness down toward the armpit or the gaze toward the armpit. Perhaps breathing now into the left side of the neck. Really noticing the expansion that the breath can bring. And we'll go ahead and release out of that. So we're just going to do a quick warm up practice. We can start by making our way into a table. So you want to try to have the knees under the hips as much as is possible or comfortable. You're going to have the uh, wrist underneath of the shoulders. Fingers are spread wide. And then we're going to steady down in through the right arm, open up through the left, and then make our way in to thread the needle. So inhale, open up through the left, reach up through the left hand. Exhale, that left arm down behind the right, reach away, begin to bring the shoulder down toward the mat. If that's not happening in your body, that's okay. You can stay up on the forearm. Wherever you're at, take full breaths into the opening. And then on the exhale, ground down through the right arm, lift up through the left, reaching away. 
and exhale now down ground down in through the left hand inhale open up through the right reaching up lengthening exhale the right arm down and slide it behind the left either you're going to keep going all the way down toward the shoulder or maybe you'd like to stay up through the forearm wherever you're at breathe deeply and then steady down and through the left inhale open through the right reaching expanding and then bring the right arm back down so we're going to make some hip circles and while we're exploring in through the, the movement in through the hips we also want to explore the engagement in through the hands and the forearms so we're not dumping down into the wrist but we're using the forearms and the muscles of the hands to help us to guide us strengthening the wrist strengthening the muscles around the wrist but also preventing uh, wrist damage or damage in through the wrist so we're not asking the wrist to bear all the weight after we've done a few directions in one side we're going to switch and go in through the other and so just once you've got that engagement in through the hands and the forearms you can now start to explore the movement in through the hips so just staying present with that sensation of the opening or the range of movement as you go through your circles and then we're going to make our way to a child. So typically we open the knees out toward either side of the mat bring in, and bring the toes together. But for this purpose, we're going to keep the knees together and then just scooch back or sit the heels back, uh, sit the hips back toward the heels and then create length in through the back of the body. So you can begin to rest the forearm, uh, forearms on the ground and the forehead toward the ground. It might not reach. And then maybe create a little bit more space by just inching the fingertips forward and taking full breaths in through the opening of the shoulders and through the upper back while also allowing the hips to rest down toward the heels so we're going to inhale up into a cow pose so that's like a table but then we're dropping the belly lifting the gaze rolling the shoulders away and then we're gonna go back into a child, resting the hips, resting the forehead. And then we're gonna make our way up into a camel. So we're gonna steady down in through the knees and the tops of the feet and lift the arms all the way up. So creating length in through the spine, grounding down into the kneecaps. On the exhale, we're gonna bring the hands behind us. Hands are gonna find the glutes, fingertips facing down, and then gently pressing down and just beginning to open the chest up, reaching the chest up toward the sky as you draw the shoulders away from you. And then we can release out of that. We're going to go back and through a child's pose, just sinking the hips, dropping the forehead, taking a full breath into the shoulders. And then exhale as you rise up into the cow. Inhaling through the cow, rotting through the collarbone. And then exhaling back into a child, softening, releasing. And we inhale, rising up all the way up into the camel. So first sitting up on the knees, lifting up tall. Exhaling the hands behind you as they find the glutes. And then inhaling, reaching up the heart, drawing the shoulders away. And then exhale down and through a child. So take a full breath in through child's using the ujjayi breath. So in through the nose, exhaling out through the mouth, maybe just hollowing out through the mouth, listening to the breath. Then we'll make our way into a child's, or I'm sorry, into a downward facing dog. So we can begin to rise up, lift the toes, plant the feet, and then lift the hips, send them away. We want to keep the arms active, so pressing in through the mat, pressing the mat away from you, lengthening through the arms, Lifting up through the sit bones, bending through the knees. Allow the head to be soft, the neck and the shoulders. And then we're going to steady down in through both hands. The left foot just lift the right leg straight up into the three legged dog. And then we're going to lift up onto the tippy toes of that left foot and start to draw the right leg underneath of us almost rounding the shoulders up and away to create space for that right leg to come down uh, in between the two hands. 
You can leave that back leg lifted or lower it down toward the earth or lower the knee down toward the earth. And we're just gonna breathe here in this low lunge. So you can have the shoulders out of the ears. Lengthen through the tail to the crown of the head. Keep the hips gently hugging in toward each other. Then we'll steady down in through the hands and then send that right leg back up into the downward facing dog or three-legged dog. Then we'll go into a downward facing dog. Taking a breath in and a breath out, staying with that ujjayi breath. Sitting down in through the hands and the right foot, lifting up through the left into that three-legged dog. Coming up onto the tippy toes of the right foot. And then sweeping left leg under, concaving through the shoulders, planting the left foot. Leg is lifted or the knees down. Shoulders out of the ears, tail down toward the earth, neutral through the hips. And exhale, we're gonna release out of that. Go back in through the three-legged dog. And then exhale down into the downer facing dog. So take a few breaths here in through that Ujjayi breath. And then we're gonna steady down in through both hands, both feet. Sitting in through the left, lift the right leg up and away for three-legged dog. And now we're going to draw that right leg underneath of the body. But this time we're going to walk the right hand inside to the inside of that right foot. The back leg is going to come down to about a 45 degree angle. And then you can open up into the side angle. So we're going to keep the hips neutral, lifting the pubic bone toward the navel, shoulders out of the ears, lengthen in all directions. We're going to steady down in through the feet and then rise up into a warrior two. So shoulders will be over the hips, sending the fingertips in opposite directions. Gaze can be over the middle fingers. Reversing the warrior, dropping the left arm, reaching up with the right, finding length in through the spine and then maybe adding a little bit of a back bend. And then we're going to come back into the um, side, I'm sorry, warrior. And then we'll lengthen through that front leg, lift up tall, and then start to extend out into the warrior. I'm sorry, triangle, my goodness. Oh, I think I taught yoga or something. Steady through the feet, lifting the left arm up and away. And so now we're going to roll that left arm down and then we're going to pivot on through the back foot so both toes are facing toward the front of the mat and then go ahead and step forward with that back foot so we're coming into uh, pyramid pose pyramid pose um, the stance is much shorter than it would be in a triangle or warrior or anything else but the idea is still to keep the sending the hips behind you and keep the length in through the spine just setting in through the feet, lifting forward with the crown, touch shoulders out of the ears. And so you can begin to make your way out of that by having the hands come down toward either side of the foot. And we're going to make our way into Ardha Chandrasana or um, like a half moon pose. So if you like to try it, you can stay here or step back into a downward facing dog if you prefer. Otherwise, we're going to steady down and through that right foot and start to just reach forward, um, walking the hands forward, sending the left foot away so that we're almost balancing on two hands and one foot. Still, as always, the goal is to keep the spine long. So we really want to send those hips away as we reach forward with the crown. And then you're welcome to start to add to it by going into the full half moon you would be stacking the hips on top of each other and then you can start to open that left arm up toward the sky as always sending the hips away reaching the crown forward staying with the breath and then you can exhale bringing the left arm back down you can make your way into a standing split and then you can bend through that front leg, step back with the left. So we're in a low lunge, but we're gonna ride in through the downward facing dog. So you can step back, maybe you'd like to kick up into the three leg dog and then coming back down. Again, breathing, staying with the breath, listening to the breath. 
Breathing fully in through the nose, all the way down to the belly. And then exhaling out through the mouth, hollowing out through the throat, all the way up to the crown. And try that round of breath a few more times. So we're going to make our way through that little standing sequence on the other side. Steady down and through both hands, both feet. We're going to lift the left leg up and up. And then we're going to draw the left leg underneath us, bringing that foot in between the hands, walk the hands to the inside of the foot, and roll the right foot down to a 45. And then open up into your side angle. So if the arm isn't feeling reaching all the way up toward the sky, you can have it just press down in through the hip, charging that back leg down and through the mat, in through the pinky edge side of that right foot. Of course, we're going to lengthen. And then we can steady down in through the feet. So really pressing the feet in toward the mat and away from each other. And we're going to rise up into the warrior two. So gaze is out over the middle left fingers now. Staying neutral, going through the hips as you make the tail heavy. Lift up through the crown. Drop the right arm, lengthen through the spine first, then maybe you add a little bit of a back bend for the reverse warrior. And then you can go back into the warrior two. Now we're going to lengthen through the front leg. Setting down and through the feet, lift up tall, and then you can start to reach forward and come down into the triangle. Again, maybe if that arm isn't feeling reaching up and away, you can have it supporting down and through the lower back and through the hip. Maybe you're using that left arm down toward the mat, that's, that's hands on to the mat, pressing gently into the left leg as the left leg presses into the left arm. And when you're ready, you can start to lengthen and then fold that right arm down. Hands are gonna come toward either side of the foot, back foot's gonna pivot toward the front of the room and then we're, or toward the front of the mat, and then we're gonna step forward with that Right foot now shortening the stance and moving into a pyramid pose, finding where it's comfortable for you. We're never locking the legs out, but there's always a micro bend in through the knees, sending the hips away, lengthening through the spine, shoulders out of the ears, staying strong and through the core. And then if you'd like to make your way into the artist Jaxa, you can, or the half moon, or maybe you'd rather step back into a downward facing dog or find a child. If you want to do the half moon, you're going to start to steady down in through the left and lift the right foot up. So you're going to have hands and foot balancing on the mat. And if you're ready, you can open that right hip up. And so we're charging down in through the left foot, but staying active in through the right. The right toes are reaching away. And ideally, you want to stack the shoulders on top of each other. Again, that inner arm doesn't need to be lifted. It can be supporting in through the lower back. You want to breathe fully. And exhale, lengthen. You can bring the hands back down if you're comfortable or would like to go in through a standing split. You can. Just bowing the head toward the knees, sending the right leg away. And then you can go back down and toward that low lunge, sending the right leg away. Stay down and through the hands. Maybe you're going into a three-legged dog, or maybe you just go right into the downward facing dog. Either way, we're going to meet down and through the downward facing dog. And then find that breath. So full breath in through the nose, all the way down through the belly. Exhale, when you soften the belly, soften that crown, soften the neck and the shoulders all the way up. So creating this triangular type of breathing. Now maybe you're breathing in through the hands, up through the arms, up through the back of the body, and exhaling down through the hips, through the legs, and out through the ears. And the next inhale, maybe you're breathing in through the heels, up the legs, up the hips, and then exhaling, cascading down the back of the body, through the arms, and out through the palms. Maybe you can hear your breath in through 
through the nose and exhaling out through the throat. So we can go ahead and start to make our way uh, toward our, our yin practice. So we're going to steady down or roll, uh, come down into a table. And then we can start to walk the hands back. We're going to walk the knees out toward the side and sit down toward the earth. And then we're going to start to um, make our way into, it's almost like a half wide-legged forward fold, except in yin, the idea is always to get the, um, the head of the thigh bone pressing or compressing down into the connective tissue of the joints in through the hips. So we're typically working with the lower body and the spine in yin yoga. And so you just want to find a way that you can create that in your body. So you can steady down in through um, that. Maybe the knee is more bent so that you've got that compression. Maybe you're using some type of support underneath of the knee. Maybe it doesn't need to be lifted all the way up. And in yin, the idea is to be able to find a place, go to your edge, and then find a place that you can be still because you want to stay there for time. So we've got to create this stress of compression in through the body and then be able to stay there for time so that we're getting the intended effect. So once you've found a place that it's comfortable when you can feel that compression down in through the hips, you want to keep the spine long spine lengthens first, then you maybe start to take the uh, side of the body, the body in through the inside of the left leg. So that left arm can come down toward the mat. You might be lifted up on something, whether it's a block or a bolster or a pillow, or blankets. And then you can start to roll the shoulder away from roll the right shoulder away from you, opening up in through the collarbones. Gaze can lift toward the sky as long as it's comfortable for the neck. You can also gaze forward or you can gaze down. So using that breath as an anchor of awareness, almost an anchor into the present moment. Allowing it to ground you down and through the earth. And then opening up through the chest, through the heart, expanding along through the rib cage, of course, in through the throat. Being present with your experience. Noticing the sensations. You might be able to notice the sounds inside and outside of the room. Maybe you can notice the sounds that you can hear that's furthest away. Noticing the expansion of the belly on the inhale. And how it sort of comes back to rest on the exhale. Creating an inviting 
feeling a sense of stillness. Let's take another full breath in. And then exhale, start to take that left arm and press the earth away as you start to rise up, moving slowly, staying aware of the sensation in through the body. So noticing the echo of that pose, what happened? What's shifting? What's changing? What's different? And then once you feel it's time, you can start to make your way out of it. So you can just start to lift the uh, knee up. So then to walk that way again. And we are gonna go through the other side, but let's just create a little bit of circulation. And we're gonna, so steady down and through the sit bones and just make a few windshield wipers with this uh, movement originating from the hips, not from the knees. And we can go in through the other side. So this time we're going to find a place that is um, creating a sense of compression down and through the right side. And there's a tendency to want to round our back in this. So maybe if you're walking the sit bones, away from you a little bit and then creating this length in through the spine and through the lower back it might make it a little bit more accessible and then you want to find a place that you can settle into it so if you have some type of support there you can use that if it's supportive or helpful Once you've created a place that you're on your edge, which is not pain, but might be a little discomfort or a little uncomfortable, might be a little bit of discomfort, you can then start to walk the right arm, maybe it's just inside of the leg, and then we're lengthening. So lengthen first, always lengthen first, then you can start to open that left shoulder up toward the sky, maybe that left shoulder blade starts to roll toward the spine, so toward the middle of the back. And the gaze can be up toward the sky, straight in front of you, or down. So again, using that breath. And the breath is always the pathway in. So it's internal, into the present moment, into the body, and out of the mind. So we want to allow the breath to, to create stillness, create presence, and awareness. This is a type of mindfulness. There is mindfulness. Staying present with the sensations. Or maybe it's most useful for you to stay present with the sounds that you hear. You might be noticing the texture of the mat on your fingertips or maybe be able to notice how the body rises, expands on the inhale, then on the exhale, how everything kind of comes back in. And you could try to maintain this full breath, breathing in fully 
in through the body, in through the lungs, in through the belly. And then exhaling down and through the mat. Almost exhaling softness in through the muscles. Just like we're breathing in a refreshing breath, fresh sense of energy. And we're exhaling any tension that might still be in the body. Using that breath to guide the body, to guide the muscles into a place of stillness and softness. Let's take another full breath in and then exhale, begin to prepare the body to come up and of course this is slowly, slowly means not fast, staying present, not losing that connection with the body or with the sensations, so staying aware of what's happening through the body as you begin to rise up. And just noticing when it feels best in your body to start to come out of it. So maybe you're beginning to bring that leg, that right leg in toward the body. And then you can maybe bring, start to bring um, the soles of the feet toward the middle of the mat, or maybe they're directly in front of you. And then just creating a few windshield wipers in through the legs, not in, just enough, originating from the hips, from the hip socket, rolling the head and the thigh bones in throughout the hip socket. So we can begin to come out of that, but we're going to go in through um, it's, a, it's a butterfly in the end, so I'll see your little cobbler's toes. You're going to lift up tall and then walk the sit bones away. We want to keep that groundedness in through the sit bones. So you're going to walk the soles of um, the feet actually away from you and, and yin yoga there further away so that you can create that compression down in through, through the hips. And then again, it is, can be supportive to have something there for your knees. The idea is to be able to stay there for time. And of course, we're lengthening through the spine and then starting to offer the heart down toward the feet. So if you have any disc issues, um, especially in through the lower back, any bulging discs, it's not advisable to lean forward. So if we keep that lengthen through the spine, we can get the effect of the pose, or the intention of the pose, without compromising the safety of the back. If you do not have disc issues, then you can start to round the back a little bit and lower maybe the forehead down toward the feet. You're just going to want to do the version of it that's most safe and accessible for you. It's really the same pose with two different variations, so you're not like doing it wrong or anything either way. It just depends on what you want to practice today. So reconnecting with that breath, actually breathing into the muscles of the belly, softening those muscles, might create a little bit more space for you to maybe go a little bit deeper. Maybe after time your body is sort of opening a gate, allowing for more space. Or maybe your body's doing the opposite and asking you to come out of it, so listen and honor the body no matter which direction it's taking you. And try to keep that awareness in through the hips. 
into the experience and the sensation. Noticing without judgment. So this is not a cognitive experience. It is a mindful experience. It's a present experience. It's a state of being. But we're not thinking about it. We're more like the witness to it. We're just watching what's happening. Noticing it. Staying present with the breath, using the breath to anchor us back into the experience, climbing into the experience and getting comfortable with it. yourself to take another full breath in and exhale all the way down through the earth. We're going to start to prepare the body to come out of it, of course, but slowly. So you're slowly pressing the earth away, slowly walking the body back up and staying present with the experience the whole time. Often in yoga, the injury happens on the way out. We want to be careful that we're staying aware of what's happening in the body so that we don't allow injury. We can move slowly enough to create this awareness of what's happening with the body and wisdom will tell us what to do. You know, if we're moving too fast or in the wrong direction. So we can start to bring the soles back down onto the earth and just create a few push up like this, shake the fingers, rattle with the legs. <laughs> Originating from the hips, but drawing the knees down toward the earth. So creating this internal rotation in through the legs. And then we can start to make our way out of it. So we're going to go in through, um, okay, we're going to come back into the tabletop. So again, move slowly, move carefully. And this is really just to set ourselves up for the next four minutes pose. And we're going to open up into the shoulders a bit. So we're going to bring the forearms down on toward the mat or toward the support um, using a bolster or pillows or blankets or cushions or something to lift you up will be, most likely will be beneficial for you. Um, because we're going to try to get into the shoulders. And so we do want to have the hips over the knees. And then we're just going to start to lengthen through the arms. So you can bring the forehead down uh, toward your support, or if you're on the earth, you could be on the earth. But while we're creating this opening in through the shoulders, we also want to be breathing into the opening in through the chest. So it's if we're compressing the body down or the chest or the forehead down onto the mat too much, it can sort of make it difficult to get into that area. But here we want to try to focus on opening up through the shoulders, breathing any tension that may be in there and breathing it out. You can take full breaths, almost using the breath to wash out the area of the shoulders. And you might be able to breathe in through the heart, in through the collarbone, in through it in the lungs, noticing the expansion and fluid through. Try to breathe any frustration, any tension, which tends to get stored in 
to the neck and the shoulders. That is one of the physical symptoms of chronic stress, it's a sense of tightness in through the shoulders or the neck. It might also be through the jaw, so that you could start to unhinge the jaw. Allowing the jaw to soften. Noticing the expression on the face. And if you can allow the eyes to be soft, the temples, the forehead. To breathe in through that, what they call a third eye, that pineal gland, in between the eyebrows and just above the eyebrows, so sort of the middle of the forehead. So you're breathing in throughout the face, almost creating this current of energy that's flowing around through the face. So it's softened through the muscles, giving the eyes and the temples and the jaw a chance to relax. Keeping that awareness in through the third eye, it can help to clear the mind. Perhaps creating a sense of clarity. Or if nothing else, just giving you a focal point to keep your awareness on so that you don't allow the mind to wander. Allow yourself to prepare to come out of this. First, just taking a full breath in. Anything that's left in there that you feel like is stagnant, anything that needs to be moved or opened up a little bit more, allow yourself to try to make that happen now and of course slowly as always you're going to start to come out of it adding weight down and through the arms coming up toward the elbows again moving slowly staying present staying aware of what's happening in through the body and when you're ready start to make your way in through a table and then we're just gonna lay down on the back so you want to make your way into position where you can lay down I usually just walk my knees out toward the side sink my hips down and then just start to roll over maybe you've got a better way So once you've made it onto the back, it could help to press the hips away. So have the hands behind the hips and then just create length. So it's like you're trying to grow the torso out of the hips. And then you could draw the shoulders down, like depressing the shoulders a bit so that they're not lifted up or shrugged up in through the ears. And we're just going to make our way into a happy baby so we can start to walk the knees toward the chest or uh, toward the armpits actually. And so this is something you, you can explore what's best in through their body, in through your body. If it's better to have the tail drawn down toward the mat and just draw the uh, knees toward the el toward the armpits, I'm sorry. Or if you'd rather lift the tail up and around down in through the back a little bit so that you can maybe have more movement to get the legs or the feet up toward the sky. Again, there isn't really a right or wrong. It's just listening to your body. What does your body need today? Of course, the idea is to create that compression down in through your hips. So you might have the inside of your feet or the toes just gently encouraging or inviting, never forcing, but just inviting the knees down toward the either side of the mat, either side of the body. Or maybe there's no way that that's happening in your body today. That's all right. You can bring the hands underneath your knees, gently drawing the legs down toward the body or uh, toward the mat. 
and just try to take full breaths here in through the belly. And then exhaling up through the crown of the head. Maybe breathing with that ujjayi breath in through the nose and then out through the hollow of the throat. Now you can begin to release out of that by bringing your knees up toward the sky. And then from here, you can draw the legs in toward the chest and just rock them side to side. Or maybe it's more useful to take the knees and just create circles with either leg. Or maybe you would rather hug both legs in and then make circles with both legs, both knees. It really isn't right or wrong, just try to be balanced. So whichever you do on one side, do on the other side. you can begin to lower the soles of your feet back down toward the mat. And we're just going to move in through a really quick twist. So we can extend the arms away. So the idea here is that the shoulders stay almost level, but the shoulder blades are going to be depressed down the body and not lifted up. But you can keep the arms out into a T or you can create a goal post. And then we're going to lift the knees up. So lengthen through the spine first. Bring both knees down toward the side. So you want to keep the knees stacked. They might not make it all the way down toward the mat. Or maybe you need some support. And then take a full breath in through the belly. This is nourishing in through the digestive system, the spine. And then using control, we're going to lift the knees back up toward the center of the body and then make your way over toward the other side. So there may be a tendency for the whole body to want to roll over. We're just trying to create a twist. And just be careful not to overdo it. You don't want to feel any pain, no pinching, no tingling, no numbing, no burning. But you should be feeling lots of opening. And then we can begin to bring the knees back up toward center. You can hug the knees in toward the body one more time if you'd like. You can rock from side to side or maybe you're ready to just extend the legs away from you. Maybe you'd rather keep the soles of the feet on the earth. This is the final rest pose so you can make your way into whatever is most comfortable for you. Find whatever supports you might need, wherever that might be helpful. You might want support underneath of the knees, or maybe you'd rather lift the legs up. Or just keep them extended away. So stay with the breath. Truly anchoring yourself into the body and into the present moment with the breath. Allowing the breath to come tangible. If you can notice a thought, you can allow it too to come go. And you can try to, as you're taking full breaths all the way down and through the belly, expanding in through the diaphragm, stimulating that vagus nerve, and then exhaling, grounding down, noticing the connection that the shoulders have with the mat. Maybe noticing the contact of the skin with the mat. You might be able to notice the weight 
weight of the body. Maybe a sense of dancing. And then just allowing that mat, the earth, the ground, to support, support you. Finding a place of surrender. We don't need to carry the weight. We can't allow it to be. It isn't giving up, but it's knowing that, knowing when you've done all you can do. Exhaling back into the earth. Just gonna allow yourself to take one more full cleansing breath. And then exhale any tension, any weight, anything that might be left. And slowly begin to roll over toward the side. And you can rest there in that form of stability, security, safety. Again, taking a full breath in through the nose. Exhaling down into the earth. Whenever you're ready, you can start to make your way to seated. Beginning to press the earth away. Rising up slowly. You can join me in a seated form. And bring the hands to heart center. Turn the awareness in toward the heart. We take an intentional breath together. So exhaling first, and inhaling, and exhaling. Namaste.